Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calder Ness. This episode, we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of notorious stuff, and we have a special guest that was in the most recent Michigan State's State Hero Clicks tournament. This is episode 474. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred beast of deadpan humor. Over oh, okay, six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you and a costume. You absolute fools. So they're gonna be able to edit that out. Sure. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. LH for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And if you're doing your shopping from Shop.WizKids.com, use code DIALH10 for 10% off your Hero Clicks order there. Not usable with Iconics or Play at Home kits. Joining me, like always, in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? That is me, and I am here. Hey, there it is. And showing up is half the battle. Our special guest this week is from the stadium's very own Alex Morris. What's going on, Alex? Hey there. Very excited to be here today. So, Alex, introduce yourself a little bit. You've been on the show before, but it's been a minute. So give a give a quick rundown for the listener. Who are you? What's your HeroClix background? Uh, what do you do HeroClix-wise related? Give, it, give them the business. Yeah, uh, my name's Alex Morris. I uh, live in um, Saginaw, Michigan, so uh, mid-ish Michigan. Um, I am a manager of a store, a gaming store called The Stadium. Uh, we have two locations. Uh, one is in Frankenmuth, Michigan. The other is in Bay City, Michigan. The store has been running HeroClix events since it came out in 2001. I started playing more actively in 2019, and I've been loving every minute of it since then. Beautiful, beautiful. We're going to start off each week like we always do with what made us happy, Simeon made you happy this last week my man what made me happy this last week was uh <clears throat> we finally got the two ipf winners uh tickets purchased ah. so i'll be making a post later this week on the ipf uh, page for anyone that's still paying attention to the ipf page we've been sw- silent for a while because uh kind of like off season things will r- ramp up a little bit more closer to worlds and after worlds but yeah, we finally got Andrea's and Edison Lee's uh, tickets. We were able to cover both their tickets entirely, and we even have a little left over. So we're going to take them out to a somewhat nice dinner. Not super nice because there's not a lot left over, but there is some. Cook so out, cook out, cook at least out. Cook they out, will cook eat. Out. Yeah, they will be able to eat at this nice dinner. Uh, but no, we got that all done. Later this week, I'll be making a post with all the intricacies, the like ticket prices and like the bank statements, that kind of stuff. Um, I have almost all the screenshots ready to go up. I just have to redact a little bit of information, mostly people's names from, uh, right. well, from PayPal. Yeah, because it, it gave huh. me everyone's names that donated. So I mostly have to redact that because if they don't want to be seen, I'm not going to force it upon them. But also, with Worlds, uh, we've got a local that's going to be going, so that's really cool. Uh, I, I just found that out today, but yeah, Aaron, uh, he pops into Dragon's Lair occasionally. He's going to be going to Memphis. He has said, oh, wow, awesome. that, that uh, I can't remember what they call it, but the uh, the convention exclusive like package that you get when you can, when you get the chance to purchase when you stay at Graceland the Graceland Hotel uh, guest house, I guess is what it's called. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but there's a special package that you get that gives you like a free battle royal, a free admission to the tour, and then also a couple of convention exclusives. He was like, that's a crazy good deal for 50 bucks. I'm so glad it was like still there. And I was like, yes, yes, it is. Uh, The first year that I went to Memphis, that package pretty much paid for the hotel room that I stayed in. So it's pretty cool. But yeah, those things make me happy. It's cool that uh, we won't be the only Omahaans, Om- Omaha- Omahaans in 
Memphis. Yeah. That sounds no, that sounds right. Yep, the Omaha. So just to go over that room package, since that is kind of pseudo news this week, uh, might as well just run run it totally down. You get a 2023 Elvis Experience tour ticket. Ooh ah, Which uh, is you get like a DC a Hero Flicks thirty dollar price tag on its own. Like yeah. whether you like Elvis 80, or not, it says eighty bucks to look at the museums, yeah. the mansion, and Elvis's airplane. Is eighty dollar yeah. values? Like that's really good. Uh, you get a death metal Wonder Woman. You get a Warp World Phoenix. You get the Watcher, who's new, who we haven't seen what he does yet, which is cool. You get an onslaught mimic chest figure, and then you get a free entry into a Hero Clicks or battle royale or an onslaught side event maximum 20 dollar value for 50 bucks and it is seriously like a really good value so yeah yeah hmm chainsaw uh, so yeah it's really we fast so i know dude like she sold out and everything so it's yeah it's good to get all that stuff so room blocks those are up on memphis ladies and gentlemen there's a link to the whiz kids uh, if you go to the whiz kids hero clicks website you'll be able to see all of that information as well as it's will be a link in the podcast description below but to me, that's awesome. I know I was really excited when we finally got everybody paid for and whatnot for the uh, IPF and getting all that done. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked that we were able to make something like that happen and get them over. So now it's just can't wait for Worlds. Alex, what made you happy this last week, my man? Uh, so I played in Michigan State. Um, I, we can make that be my what made me happy this week and go over that when we get to talking about it, or I can Perfect. have a that's, digital thing. Uh, no, that sounds, right. that sounds solid for, for okay. this episode. I'll be, I'll be really quick with mine. It was basically the same as last week, uh, was getting the captain America 750, realizing I never got the final issue of cold war and having to wait, uh, to read whatever symbol of truth, 14 or 15, and then actually read Cap 750 after finishing uh, Cold War Omega. Yeah, it was it was awesome. I mean, these these comics almost brought like a tear to my eye. I earlier that week I had also went back and I I reread the 2014 run, which is when Dimension Z and everything was introduced into comics. Because there's a big spoiler for Cold War. There's a big big uh, push for Dimension Z and somebody else ruling it, and also Ian. I'm going to call him Ian Rogers. He is not Leopold Zola. He's, I mean, you can make whatever argument, but he's, he's Ian Rogers. So Captain America's son uh, from that 2014 run is back in this crossover event. He was brought back into the forefront of comics in Falcon's run as Captain America. So seeing all of this converge come together and then after rereading that original Dimension Z run, which... I had read when it originally came out back in 2014, so I was very young at the time, and that was like one of my all-time favorite runs of Captain America. So rereading it being like, yep, it's still awesome, and then also reading the current run today that references so much from that, uh, it just made me so insanely happy. And there are a lot of really good, fun stories in Captain America 750 that I just really enjoyed. There's a lot of things that confirmed some suspicions I had about like Captain America and then like other things like him growing up in New York and being an artist and all this other cool stuff, which is really fun. Uh, that meant a lot to me to see as a comic book fan. So just comic books made me happy this week and man, they were just, they were great. Just making, making some bangers. But all right, let's go ahead and jump into the news. Notorious came out this last week, and by came out, I mean Scott Porter did an unboxing three months before it's going to be released, two and a half-ish months early, so we got a pretty big window for Notorious coming I think out for September uh, 20th, right? September 9th it's is like, like when pre-releases can start pre-release. or something like okay. that. I am checking that right now. I, I'm pretty sure, yeah. It's the set was like pushed back potentially to uh, I think October maybe even, but uh, that'd be awful. Ugh. Yeah. So um, it, according it was... to Alliance, the street date is September twentieth. It is September twentieth. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that's like the what set do you release think? date. It's, um... Is uh, is Wheels of Vengeance going to come out in October? I don't probably know. Probably not. That's probably going to get a really late October, like Halloween release. I assume it'll be a November release. 
which means it may or may not be allowed for the ever coveted HC Realms figures of the year, which would be such a bummer. You know, yeah, I know. Isn't that scary no to think about? Listed yet? Yeah, that's so. We shall, we shall see. But notorious, the notorious DC set that's coming out. You guys saw the unboxing. I watched the unboxing. What was a figure that kind of jumped out to you? Like, oh man, can't wait. Or you're like, oh, that's interesting. Why would they do that with this figure? Et cetera, et cetera. Any, any thoughts on the um, unboxing, Joe? I guess I'll go first. first. Whatever's, yeah. So one of the things I was looking forward to the most about the set, and still am, is with it being such a big set and being like entirely villains, so they can do a bunch of random characters and deep cuts and all sorts of stuff. Um, so uh, the thing that I am going to talk about is Gentleman Ghost, which previously had been a um, a WizKids DC 2013 promo and was in Origin way back in whenever Origin came out. A long time ago. Um, so so he's only been clicks twice. Uh, it's been it's been a minute. It's been a decade. Um, and uh, what he does is he's fifty points, um, four range, phasing. Um, he's got a special defense power, uh, super senses, and when he uses it and succeeds, after resolution, steal the attacker one penetrating damage. Oh, sorry. This is a uh, number zero two seven. It's an uncommon. Um, so super senses and hurts people when uh, things go well for you. And he has Rage Combat Expert. So the thing I really like about him... Oh, and Mystics and um, Suicide Squad Team Ability. The thing I really like about him... One, is Ghost Realm. And I love the Ghost Realm keyword. I have all of the undead ghost stuff. I can't wait to throw this on the team with Ghost of Abraham Lincoln. Uh, two, um, he has a trait. Adjacent opposing characters can't use attack powers or the effect of equipment. So he's five Ooh. clicks long, he's got super senses and mystics, and he also shoots out of adjacency, so he gets to just phase up to you, you can't get away from him, um, shuts down your equipment, um, makes it so you can't use any attack powers, um, and still gets to shoot you 11 for 3 in your face. Mm. It's just, it's really mm -hmm. solid, um, looking forward to it, I'll probably try it in pulp. Um, the equipment thing obviously doesn't matter there, but the no attack powers is pretty cool. He is pretty sweet. Now, you, you said you're not really familiar with Gentleman Ghost as a character uh, yet. Not super, no. I would, if you have what's called Max now, I would highly recommend watching all of Batman Brave and the Bold because, number one, it's the best animated Batman show ever, bar okay. none. Don't I do have them. Max from a friend, though. So. Uh, but uh, Gentleman Ghost is like a reoccurring side villain slash main villain of a handful of episodes he's in a lot of beginning episode little mini adventures that they do uh, and it's really fun like uh, so when Ghost, they, they do a cold open out. where like batman's capturing somebody in the midst of capturing somebody and then they go into the actual episode he's that oh character. like he'll be got but it yeah he's like yeah Aha, i have possessed this pony batman what will you do now and he's like Oh, Robin, quick, get Buana Beast to turn that pony into a, a bee pony. I don't know. That's that's a lot of, of Bra Batman Blair That's Raven kind of, Bold. that's basically, I'd say, yeah. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, that's pretty much, that's pretty much Batman Bear in the Bold. Uh, but yeah, so he is really fun in that. So I'm excited for New Gentleman Ghost, kind of for that reason. Uh, Simeon, is there anything that like popped out crazy to the set to you that you want to talk about? Yeah, so obviously, if you've watched the Scott Porter videos, you saw him show off the little chase card that he got. So we know that the Justice League is going to be Black Lanterns. That's part of the chase theme. But in addition to that, we also got a uh, uncommon Black Hand, which very cool. But it's, he's part of the Black Lantern Corps. He's kind of the one that kicks the whole thing off in the original comic line and then of all things we got necron the like i don't know the the entity of the black lantern Corps. i guess you could say they like you know most people know him yeah, as like the two by two or three by six like statuette that came with war light uh he is a rare in the set so yeah uh number 044 he comes in with the Black Lantern Corps Deity, Herald, and Monster keywords. He has the Cosmic Energy Team ability. He has 
two big traits. One is Rise, and it is free, generate a grave hindering terrain marker within a range and line of fire, friendly characters with the Black Lantern key, core keyword, occupying or adjacent to any friendly grave terrain markers may heal past their starting lines if healed by a character with the Black Lantern core keyword. And then his second trait is Steel Energy, but may use it with a close or range attacks. Um... When opposing character is KO'd after resolutions, heal a friendly character with the Black Lantern Corps keyword two clicks. So he has a 125-point line, a 75-point line, and a 40-point line. I would, honestly, like in sealed, I might just use the 75-point line. Uh, it's 50 points less, but uh, he, it starts him with sidestep instead of stealth, and he still has sure. four damage. Uh, he's giant size. I'll go over his whole dial real quick. So, giant size, 7 range, improved targeting through hindering. He is 8 clicks long. He starts with 2 clicks of stealth, uh, psychic blast, invincible, and exploit weakness. And those are his 2 tar- starting clicks for 125. And then on click 3, he goes to his 75 point line. So, 12 attack with psychic blast, 4 damage. Starts with a 19 on that invincible and then on click three, he keeps that exploit weakness, but he goes to sidestep with Psychic Blast. He drops Invincible for Invulnerability, and he keeps that until click six. Uh, he keeps sidestep until click six as well. He instantly goes to Blades, Claws, Fangs instead of Penetrating Psychic black Blast on click four. So you go from two ways to deal pen damage to only one because uh, he keeps exploit for clicks four and five. And then on click six, which is his 40-point starting line, he has sidestep blades, invulnerability, and three damage with prob. He's a 17 invul on that click. Pretty easy to take out for 40 points. Um, I think you have to build around his 40-point line if that's what you're going to play him at. But I think 75 or 125 will be great and sealed. And then the ability where he has a free generate a grave hindering grave hindering terrain marker within range and line of fire. He can just make that under himself, and it's hindering terrain, and he has stealth top dial, so he can just Ooh. always be in stealth top dial. But then on top of that, he is a friendly character with the Black Lantern core keyword, and if he's occupying that hindering grave, which he can just make on his own, he can heal past his starting line. So if healed by a character with a Black Lantern core keyword. So uh, if you play him at 75 and you just generate a grave underneath him and you shoot 7 range through hindering 11 for 4, you get to not only heal from steel energy, but you also get to heal if you KO'd somebody. So you could potentially pay 75 points and get him healed to click 1 real easily. Uh, same could be said for 40, but I think it's a lot less likely just cause he's got a 10 for three, not psychic blast. Like I feel like in sealed, this guy is going to be really hard to put down. And then I think in constructed, it's going to be really interesting depending on what the other lanterns do. This guy being 40 points and letting people heal past his starting line is pretty nuts. Yeah. I feel like that could be just insanely broken really fast. Yeah. It, so I, we'll definitely, see. <laughs> I definitely think that it could potentially have problems, but we haven't seen the rest of the chases. So, right. I mean, apparently they're spread throughout like the rarities as well. So we do have, yeah, an uncommon, a rare. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a super rare, maybe even a generic common. We've seen a lot of the commons, so I don't know what's left really, but maybe a Black Lantern recruit. The, um, the full checklist was on the last video. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I, I didn't read really look so, it, it's there. I click on pictures. I don't read. Like, I don't really care much for this reading business. Yeah, I think the Black Lanterns might be able to get pretty out of control with the Indigo Ring just being equipable and just power action. Although, looking at the one we did see, if that's any indication, then their top dial is definitely overcosted and they're meant to be played on their lower yeah. dial and heal very few clicks yeah, like the chase like the we saw spaces. chase superman definitely benefits from being able to be healed up and not pl- like started at yeah. 260 no one's no one's paying an extra 140 points oh, for no. that that's insane i really 
really like that design. I mean, we saw it with the Carnage chases, and we're seeing it here again. The idea that, like, other than, I guess, Prime Hulk, um, things that are healing past their starting line, the idea that constructed wise he would never ever pay the points for um the full thing but it gives you something exciting in like battle royal where of course you'll you'll play you'll play the full thing right right yeah. um get, get it's the rough power. the idea of being like i'm gonna design this figure that's not worth like yeah purposely not worth paying the full points for i i view it as in constructed that line just doesn't exist but it's a bonus in something like Battle Royale. Sure. Yeah. I do yeah. wonder, Victorious. looking at the, the Superman's point lines, they're, they kind of just seem to be like arbitrary, kind of just like random at 260 and 120. I do wonder how the Black Lantern core keyword will match up with Necron and Black up, Hand yeah. and the rest of the chases. Like, I assume Superman's the most expensive Black Lantern, unless Martian yeah. Manhunter is. Most They've likely. had some surprising Martian Manhunters in the past that are really, really spendy. So we'll have to see how how easy it is to flush the team out here. But I'm s- <laughs> uh, a character I really want to talk about. Well, kind of first going over like a few things with the set. Uh, our Orange Lantern Lex that I wanted is actually just a normal Lex Luthor, like old school Hanna Barbara looking Lex Luthor, yeah. who just also has Herald and Orange Lantern keyword, which makes me. But he's number one in the set. Very sad. Uh, it's a kind of a huge bummer that our title character, our main guy on the box, Lex Luthor, is just the set 001 common, and he's not particularly good. Uh, I like his trait a lot. It's really cool that he can just give out Superman enemy, and this could allow to have like a ton of outwits on your team. But man, a dial that just falls off like a sack of potatoes. This is this is it. If that's what you ordered, this is it. Um, it's a little fun that he can be an Orange Lantern in addition to all this stuff. Um, but it's just kind of a bummer that we didn't get an Orange Lantern Legacy card or just a new Orange Lantern Lex that really leans into being a Lantern. But uh, here we are. Probably worth shouting out again really quick. The Cordian Thunders are 15 points. And they have the Sinestro Chorus keyword, which means they are our new official cheapest ring bearer. Oh, baby. And they're a common. So easy to get. Um, And also, they just happen to have sidestep, pulse wave, willpower, and shape change. So they're not, like, easy, easy to take down, which is just so convenient. They don't even die to a pulse wave. No, they don't. Yeah, exactly. Yep. That's, That's fun. Unless there's some knockback involved. But, yeah, it's like, okay cool oh and also you they just might be turned into a a goon or something uh so that's cool um yeah yeah i can't say like i get it the weaponers of cord they make sinestro's ring it makes sense they're sinestro core um man a 15 point ring dropper though ring bearer that's that is tough that's 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 really rough and then Shout out to another great effect I super enjoy is the War of Jokes and Riddles. I was one of the only people back then in the Heroclix world all these years ago when Harley Quinn and the Gotham Girls was coming out. I was super big proponent that we get a Kite Man. And not many people were talking about it. Just saying. Just saying. And because he was kind of a meme online during that time, if you're in Facebook, comic book groups and all this stuff. So I was a huge proponent of that in Heroclix when we finally saw him in Heroclix. People were like, oh, who's this guy? And then they had the gall. The Kiro Cooks community had the gall to say, Kite Man, hell yeah, at Nationals the next year when they asked that question. And it's like, you didn't know. You people weren't begging for him and Harley Quinn and the Gotham Girls. Who are you? But I'm glad we get... Uh, but to go back to this Riddler, he is a really unique way to do a mystery card where he gives out a bad mystery card to your opponent and forces them to have it. Uh, we're also, if you look, yeah, sideline space only matters during force construction. You can have as much stuff on the sideline as possible during the game, which is wild. Uh, so yeah, Joker giving you a bad mystery card is hilarious. Uh, he's giving you a riddle to solve, and you're at a disadvantage for it until you solve it, which is really, really cool. And then Kite Man himself is just also sick. Like, wow, crazy deep dial Kite Man, where he does what I wanted the old one to do, 
where he gives everybody a kite and they can fly if they're outdoors, which is really sick. He can also like pick people up, carry them, all that jazz. He has a really cool special charge where if he really gets speed going, he can just ram you. It's really cool, and I'm very excited. I like a little nine attack when he's got Batman enemy. That's a okay with me. Stealing that twelve or eleven. Yeah, she I don't, know, I don't know who's got a twelve in the set for Batman enemy. One of these people may or may not. You just, who knows? You just play in pulp and you use Shiva from the Joker's Wild. That's what. Yeah, there you go. I'll play yeah. in my super kite man and pulp really quick and use sheep <laughs> aren't not pulp my sil- silver <laughs> no silver. sorry I've been, I've been doing a lot of pulp building lately yeah, i just played in both. pulp today well oh yeah, yeah. Uh, right I forgot about that dragon's lair had like their first inaugural pulp event i will say i almost disqualified a 10 year old because he was playing out of a starter set that didn't match the main force set uh-uh. and i just stared him in the eyes and i said no matter War what the you realm, do to my team, be. you lose technically. Ooh, that's funny. You Out of curiosity, rules. what did he try to pull from? Uh, he like had an entire go. X-Men Rise and Fall team, but it was uh, like from the Fast Force. So he probably had like uh, the Professor X? Yeah. All right. Is that yeah. not legal? X-Men they all, Rise and Fall. They have a different set the symbol Force, than X-Men kind of Rise and Fall. Symbol. They do. Oh, ah, ah. Uh oh, stinky. That's funny. But Notorious is cool. It's shaping up to be a great set. I'm very excited for Zod, Ursa, and Nan. I hope they are nuts. I hope they just absolutely curb stomp Superman into the ground, as they should. Uh, I'm excited. Any any anti Superman tech we're getting in the set, I'm very, very pumped for. So we'll see. Any final thoughts on Notorious guys or Scott Porter's unboxing in general? I'm I'm gonna buy so much of it, I want all the goons. Yeah, I think the number one thing for me is that there is so many bice or not bystanders, jeez, so many generics in this set that it's very reminiscent of Wonder Woman 80th, where outside of there not being a case incentive that we know of, who who knows, WizKids could pull a fast one, uh, but outside of there not being a case incentive, this is probably going to be like my highest spot into DC set, like since Wonder Woman 80th because there's literally no downside to getting extra commons. They're all like generic goons and that's what I want. I want generic goons. I've always wanted generic goons even before I knew there were generic goons. Um, But yeah, final thoughts. We do have the listing of the legacy cards. Oh yeah. So starting off with Superman Legion of Superheroes number 044 Darkseid. Pretty cool. Dark That's side. such a good pick. Yeah. That's such an insanely cool pick, dude. One of my favorite picks: Justice League Trinity War zero sixty one Mazaz. That's yeah. I'm up there. I'm there with you, dude. That's a Luther. I don't know if it's Lex or if it's Alex. It it is an it's an Alexander Luther. So it's technically still Lex. Lex okay. just goes by Lex versus Alex. Yeah, I I love that figure. I've played it. I mean, I haven't played it recently because it hasn't aged well, but. Oh no, it's very expensive. Very I played it a now. lot back when it was like still somewhat like paying two hundred and some points for a twelve attack top dial was okay. Um, just stealing powers and like end game being like this unstoppable. You know, I I killed like your bystander with shape change, so now I have that. I killed you know, yes, some dude. like fifteen point with stealth, so now I have stealth. You just become this insane monster that they can't really deal with. Um, next up is Justice League Trinity War 025, 026, 027, Ultraman, Owlman, and Superwoman. And then we might as well finish the slots off with, uh, is that really all of them? Oh, no. Justice League Trinity War 043, Johnny Quick. So, no Atomica or That's really sad. Power Ring or I wonder uh, if Fire if one of them Duster. will make an Atomica if like Johnny Quick will make an Atomica bystander or something that would be kind of fun you know that makes sense yeah I'd mess, unless I'd they're like that. somewhere hidden in the set I guess I haven't looked at the set list so I don't know but uh, next up is the Joker Wild zero thirty five Killer Moth. And the 055 awesome. Man Bat. Man, that Man Bat is so cool. Yeah. The the Killer Moth, and then also being a straight upgrade, so, so much better. 
than how he was because he was just garbage, horrible before, and now he's just so dope. Yeah, that's a uh, we're so back, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. Yeah, that's, that's the that only one we've seen so far is Killer Moth. That's the one that Scott pulled out of his brick. Um, Streets of Gotham zero two zero Calendar Man. This is one that I'm super uh, excited for. I hope they nuts. kept the weirdly meta aspect of him where he like checks for like the actual date of the year, the actual like season that Dude, you're in. If it's a if it's a holiday and all that yeah. stuff too, if it's like a weekend or a weekday, yeah, I hope so. I loved all that stuff. Uh Teen Titans 070 Cheshire. Then we've got Batman, the Batman set 037A Hush. War of Light Lissa Drac, who I I'm pretty sure has the Black Lantern keyword as well as the Sinestro keyword, so I'm assuming she's filling out the Black Lanterns, but maybe also Sinestro. Man, or there's if some she Sinestro like a cheap in there. Black Lantern that she you just slap the Indigo ring on, she'll be nuts. Yeah, she also I don't know what she does now, but she used to have like eight range outwit or perplex or something like just like mm, a, okay, no line of fire. Uh, it was something to do with like her weird book. Uh, Batman Animated Zero, Series 051, The Phantasm. Superman set 049, Queen of Fables. And then here's, uh, well, we'll do Justice League 52. So new 52, 020, or 020, uh, Deathstroke. But here's here's the big one. is the Superman and Wonder Woman G003 Brimstone. DC's finally getting some two by twos. Baby. I think. Yeah. So we've seen, geez, Surter, Carnage, Ymir. Uh, Marvel's gotten quite a few legacies. The Sentinel. We've gotten quite a few legacies a for two by twos. And so DC is finally, finally getting some of their two by twos. There's not a lot of two by twos to choose from from DC. So hint, hint. Um, Superman Wonder Woman Colossal Boosters might be a good investment if you can find them somewhere. Yeah. That brimstone might be nuts. You don't know what they might make big old sun wrestling boy do. Yeah. Lucha explosive atomic fire man. Power bomb something. Yeah. Super slam. I have yeah, no clue. He's just going to bring back be, the WWE insane. Team ability. Dude, that'd be so great. If it's like if they just keep making <laughs> figures just like Screaming Mimi, where they just reference WWE abilities, I'll be very, very I'll be very, very happy. It would be so baller. It's like um, atomic slingshot, pulse wave, yeah, choose yes. the direction of knockback. Oh make a free attack afterwards. Oh, it'd be so gross. I would love that if they did that, unless it's colossal retail, in which case I would hate it if they did that. That'd be so disgusting. But the fact that DC's getting a colossal is really, really cool. They're finally getting a um a colossal legacy card. Although DC is, well, they got they got Fulcum in modern at least. Uh, that's true. That's it. DC did. They were the the first uh, to break into the retaliation market. So the Superman true. Wonder Woman was the first set with uh, old Brimstone here at the Atom Titano. Uh, Superman, Solaris, Batman, War robots. Wheel. Yeah, all that. Yeah, fun stuff. all all of those. Those were the first, and they had, like, I, I remember at the time, because I was judging and running events at the time, and they had special rules for, like, how to use these, and it was, like, just let your your uh, players, like, open their boosters and then set one of these on the edge of the table at each table, and after the first person hits, like, the judge was just supposed to go and, like, retaliate on them. <laughs> like, it was, like, a free retail oh, really? for, like, either Is that side. A thing? What in the world? It was wild. Um, oh, because you wouldn't be able to use the colo- the super booster. Yeah, you, you couldn't. Feel. You couldn't pull it. So it was just like yeah. attacking always, both teams. I always say, equally. if someone wants to give up their two boosters and sealed, and instead open one super booster, I'll I'll say, yeah, absolutely, chief. You have that choice. I think that's funny. You know, you, you do oh. some gambling, a little bit of light gambling. Yeah, Never pulling war wheels rough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you could get war wheel. You could get Solaris. You could get uh, Batman, Batman Superman robot. robot. Pretty yeah. solid. It's a two by two that can or be in stealth. You get you get Adam, and Adam's not great at two hundred points. I think this is like only point line besides no. like fifteen. Is he? I don't even think he is three hundred or whatever. You know, like yeah. So it's like let's do a little bit of gambling. Ooh, ah, and with the the ones in Thor, they also had an object. So it was like, oh yeah, why not? Go for it. Come on, go for it. Risk it. Risk it. Come on, risk it. So 
That's yeah. fun. Or at least that's, I think it will be. that's our list of legacy cards. So again, uh, Dark Side, Mazaz, Ultraman, Owlman, Superman, Killer or Superwoman, sorry, Killer Moth, Calendar Man, Cheshire, Man Bat, Hush, Lissadrak, The Phantasm, Queen of Fables, Brimstone, Deathstroke, Johnny Quick. Most of those have only been clicked at like once at most. Like once, yeah. There's Some no of way Queen of Fables times. isn't just like totally Harley Quinn show stuck oh, in the IRS yeah. tax book like oh. version. Like that's gotta, gotta be, be that is a good what version. we're gonna do, right? That like that's gotta be what she does. So we'll see, I guess. But that's yeah. my she's like that's my guess. The justice like the Justice League isn't scary because they could kill you. They're scary because this is what they can do to you. Which I mean she makes a pretty good case uh, as to why that's terrifying a little yeah. bit. Uh, I don't blame her. So yeah. I, I do have to reminisce of back in twenty eighteen when I bought that collection all those years ago and i sold a bunch of stuff something that stuck out to me so apparently was i had four queen of fables and i looked at the dial and i was like wow this figure is absolute garbage and then i sold them all for a dollar to coolstuffinc.com because super rare bulk was 25 cents and oh, now not a dollar world, piece oh. not no 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 a dollar for all four of them because really who back then would ever want a queen of fable why would you ever want such a garbage terrible figure and now i've seen people speculation sell them for like 30 bucks and i'm like ah i wasn't gonna keep them for these five years but it does hurt a small small part of me knowing yeah. that this could have been what happened but joker's wild was a set that i almost had completely filled out and now i'm down to like just a few of like the figures and mostly the ones that i kept were ones that people wouldn't buy oh man Uh, i do know i have this man bat but there's uh, there's three figures i'm super scared of pretty sure i don't have the killer moth anymore like there's no reason i would have kept oh i definitely i definitely still have killer moth that's because he killed a super rare un uh xxs wolverine in a game for me he was the person that killed hit him off his last stop click and i, was I don't believe off. you like, this is there true was, no this is true there was a collection that i bought is the store that had like six killer moths and they were so bad i threw them away. he is he's terrible <laughs> you threw him away oh alex you threw away like 80 dollars worth of stuff probably <laughs> yeah um it was more about man i can't fit all of this stuff in the case all right killer moth can go I paid wow. like a nickel for it. Wow. <laughs> so. Incredible. Incredible. That is, that is, I, I have also thrown away figures that I didn't have the cards to. So I'm really, and they were like prominent figures. Like if they ever legacy, like Haha ha Joker, oh. Rebirth, Starfire, or like the Joker's Wild Clayface. Those are like the three notable ones that I threw away whose cards I couldn't find. Those are all I'll, things I would bet on getting legacy cards yeah i know right well this is before we knew legacy cards existed and sure. i was just like yeah well they don't have the cards so they look cool but i don't i'm not gonna keep them the only one i kept was uh was the black and white mr freeze because that actually goes super hard looks awesome but yeah now that legacy cards are a thing i'm just like please never give these figures legacy cards because they are in a landfill somewhere this is awful they're in a dump um so yeah but that's notorious. Alex, I really want to pick your brain about the Michigan event. The yeah. just give us give us a, like the vlog, you know, I drove down XYZ day. You played in pulp and you played in modern. So tell us a bit about time. day one, your pulp experience, getting to the venue, uh, and just everything about the atmosphere. M- tell us a story, paint us a picture. Yeah. So um so I live about two and a half hours away from the venue. Um, I'm Saginaw. Uh, that was in Grand Rapids. And um, I knew I wanted to do both days um, all week leading up to it. I'm like trying to talk to people like, hey, are you are you going? Do you have a hotel room? I want to do both days. Definitely not making the drive twice. Um, eventually, I just bit the bullet. And I didn't spend money on the hotel room for this, but I, I did spend um, reward points on a credit card for it. That okay. I would like to have saved for something else. But, sure. Um, and uh, so I got a hotel room. Um, I uh, I worked um, until three o'clock. Got out of work and uh, drove down. Um, checked into the hotel. Um, kind of relaxed a little bit there. Uh, you know, get get my mind ready, right? And um, like reread all my cards and be like, I have all my stuff, right? And um, oh, actually, that's a story. Um, so the, that morning, 
Um, I was making sure I had everything, and uh, my my pulp team, uh, the main attacker on it is Deathstroke, and I did not have Deathstroke. Oh no! So um, I like sent a message to like ten different people of like, "Do you have a Deathstroke? Can you get it to our store in Frankenmuth by three o'clock?" And uh, someone was able to to come through for me. Um, so shout out to. Uh, Josh Filkins, actually one of our employees, but um, yeah, he uh, he was able to get me a Deathstroke so that I could actually play my team. And um, so I get there, uh, get to the venue. I'm one of the first people actually at the venue. Um, it's really nice, actually. Um, like the okay. the um, the inside is, is super great. It's all like it was clearly. He, I don't know if he did it or it, uh, the venue for those that don't know is the American Immersion Theater in Grand Rapids, which is um, that is the company that um, uh, Scott Crampton owns. It's his company. Uh, it's his building. Um, so he hosted it there and um, they have uh, this huge office space there that wound up. Um, they used that for the event and um, there was a ton of space. Um, you know, they they could have easily fit I don't know, 80 Heroclix players in that room. Um, well, in those rooms, I should say. It, it was yeah. it was really nice, um, well lit, everything was good. The venue, great. Um, so I get there, and uh, they're still finishing setting some stuff up. I, yeah, I help a little bit with some stuff. Uh, and then some other people start shuffling in. We wound up having 14 people for Pulp. Um, and then there were some other people just hanging out playing Battle Royals. Um... And it was it was a lot of fun. I really really like pulp. It was it was competitive. The teams were good. You know the players were good, but everyone was super laid back. Um, you know every, everyone was having a great time. Um, nice. Do you nice. want me to go into any of my matches, or I guess I should go over my team real quick. You know, yeah, go over your team, go over your record, and if there's like any yep. like one specific match you may want to like so, mention, sure. Yeah. So yeah, there is. Um, so um, oh, no. <laughs> so uh, um, due to time constraints, the event started at seven thirty in the evening um, with fourteen people. Uh, they wound up doing three rounds of Swiss and then cut to top four um, because uh, they didn't want to have people driving home at like two in the morning. Um, That's very fair. So, yep, we were all okay with that. So. Um, my team was, um, hunt Deathstroke at 100 points. It was a Spider-Man family theme team, and I had to do a lot of work to get to that. Um, okay. so, uh, Deathstroke at 100 points, Franklin Richards, uh, the, um, uh, the starter set Wonder Girl on the B dial, the 40-point dial, um, Bastic Bagman at 35, uh, Beyond Amazing Mary Jane at 20, um, Absolute Venom, uh, the the um, Spider Man Carnage, whatever. Uh, Mary Jane Watson that makes the paparazzi at fifteen. Okay. Marvella at fifteen and Aunt May at ten. Um, so that was three hundred points exactly. Um, Bombastic Bagman brings Franklin into Spider Man family, and then Marvella brings Deathstroke into Spider Man family, which then Deathstroke gives his keywords to Wonder Girl. Um, okay. So my sideline was Red Raven, uh, some stuff for um, Mary Jane Watson to secret identity into War Machine because Mary Jane Watson has um, has a Stark, Stark Industries, Industries keyword. Yeah. Yep. And then I had a Sentinel and a Scroll Spy. Um, so of the course, team was course. pretty much um, the idea was um, you know Deathstroke blows everything up right. Um, Franklin is can do anything and everything. Um, 11 clicks long. It takes a lot of time for for anything, especially in pulp, to chew through that. Um, uh, Wonder Girl is my leadership, but then um, she also could just pen size stuff, and if she gets hit once, then she she has prod, she has a stop click. Um, Marvella was um, barrier, uh, which um, wound up being really helpful, of course, um, and power. Uh, Mary Jane Watson was secretly like the MVP because okay um she the paparazzi deathstroke can um can mastermind to them from uh four squares away 
So I get endless mastermind fodder for Deathstroke, and they're just in your face. They're doing things. Um, I wound up actually having round one to buy more action tokens. I had two sets <laughs> of six. Um, I, I had two sets of six, and then I made three paparazzi, which I had one of the actual paparazzi tokens, but I just used action tokens as the other two, and was like, these are paparazzi. And then, you know, they're autonomous, she's autonomous, I have leadership. I took eight actions that turn, and I was going to take eight the next turn. And um, so I had to go buy more action tokens so that I could have enough for my team. That's so funny. <laughs> I'm so um, glad, like, this is a side tangent, <laughs> but I'm so glad that, like, after that set and, like, the subsequent set, they stopped making physical, like, characters, non-bystanders autonomous, because... Having an autonomous character that makes autonomous bystanders was insane. It's still like it's yes. still insane. It is still insane. Yeah, it's incredible. That, was, that is tough. Yep. Um. And actually, with the with the empowers I have on the team, um, the paparazzi actually like hurt stuff. Like I killed something Ooh, with a paparazzi. Okay. Oh, nice. Awesome. <laughs> um. But yeah. Um. So round one, I'm not going to go into everything. Um. Round one, I won. Um, it was a good game. It was close. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, round two, same thing. Good game. Um, this one wasn't that close. Um, he overextended with his death stroke and I killed his death stroke in one turn and then I blew up his team. Mm -hmm. But, um, it was a fun game though. We both still had lots of fun, even though the game wasn't that close. Uh, game, nice. so going into round, which it happens, um, yeah. going into round three, uh, I was 2-0. Oh. Um, there were, I think, four 2-0 oh players? No, there were four or three, I forget. Um, so, <clears throat> right, I was 2-0. and oh. I was in second place on points. Um, so I was at the top table. First place in points was Scott Crampton, who was the organizer of the event and did play in Playing it. Playing his own events. Was, was a surprise, hmm. but... Um, also, not exactly a surprise, but uh, um, and um, he was playing. Uh, I mean, a whole bunch of stuff. I'm sure if you look on the critical click stuff, you'll see his team. But um, the big was thing like was Karima, he was playing. Um... It was Karima. He did not play Mister Freeze. He changed that okay. out. I don't remember all the exact changes, but it was pretty close to the still, team. Uh, he probably won still the, the uh, Nathan Richards, Louisiana. Nathaniel Richards. Uh, no, he he dropped. Oh yeah, he dropped Mister Freeze and dropped Nathaniel Richards and added okay. other stuff. Um, huh. The rest of the team was the same, and um, and so Karima is uh, really good against Deathstroke. Um, so he won map roll. Uh, took a look at what maps I had. Decided he did not want me to put him in Morlock tunnels, and wow. um, and uh, he picked Ultron's Lair, which um, side thing. I think that map should immediately be banned from every format of Hero Clicks, <laughs> not because it's broken, but because it is physically painful to look at. Yeah, it's really hard. <laughs> oh, on the it's eyes. so ugly. It's, I can't, I really can't believe they reprinted that map of all maps. I don't know who oh. likes that map. It bl kind of blows my mind. It's like a fun map to play on. It's like uh, the fine. layout is great. Dude, I love the layout, but I, the mm. reds and wires and the blues. It's just like I, oh, um, what is one this? of our one of our local players is colorblind and he he actually cannot see squares on the map. He has to literally guess yes. and assume where the squares are. That is tough. Hard uh, mode. Majestic's Almost made a mode. Tron like a Tron map, like light cycle whatever thing where oh, it's, it's like elevated and stuff that goes under the elevated and like weird little tunnel things and stuff. Oh, and it's yeah, as like colorful and distracting and like neonish as that Ultron map. And map I won something and I chose that map as my prize because I was like, I'll never be able to play on this. It hurts my brain to look at. <laughs> oh, geez. That one, that is a tough one, too. But like such a cool one in concept. But yeah. Yeah, the execution. Yeah. Um, so so basically the way it worked was I oriented the map so that I was right in front of the the, the mouth, I guess we'll call it. Okay. Um so, you know, it's it's his face, right? So I was in front of the mouth with all the elevated. Um, and um, and I went first. So I inched up a bit to be able to get um, uh, um, Deathstroke on, on elevated and uh, Franklin off elevated next to... Or 
No, it wasn't Franklin. It was Bombastic Bagman off elevated next to him, or might have been the other way. Point is, they're on different elevation next to each other in like the teeth, I guess we'll call it. And then I barriered to um and okay. made paparazzi so that he couldn't get to the rest of my team. Um, he was able to set up to um blow up one piece of blocking, and then he did um roll well. I mean, he didn't have to roll that well, but he rolled well. I missed my um, super senses on Bombastic Bagman, and he killed Bombastic Bagman. Um, so, because um, remember, Karima does shoots through everything but blocking, so the barrier is super important. But um, so he killed Bombastic Bagman, which that was my only perplex. So, um, if I had Bombastic Bagman, yeah. I could have gotten Franklin into his stuff, even past his barrier, and started killing things with Franklin. But without the perplex, I couldn't do it. Um, the idea was that Franklin would have gone up... Well, sorry, I misspoke. Franklin would go up, quake, break all his barrier, and then Deathstroke would go in and pulse wave his team. But without the perplex, could not get the reach, and I just couldn't get to anything. So I just moved up, um, got kind of got in his face on the other side of the barrier, and just had to hope that he wouldn't hit all of his attacks, and he did. So the game was basically ah, over at that point. A but but I I felt like I had to take that gambit and didn't have another option. So I did kill a couple of things as the game dragged on. Um, he didn't kill my whole team, which um, that was the first That's time in that event that that had happened. He had gotten 300 twice. Um, uh, and then, um, so after that round, I slid down to fifth because all of the people that needed to got 300. And I did not uh, make top four. Wow. Which is disappointing, but I it was a really fun day and I had a lot of fun with it. And pulp is great. Um, if I were to, um, in hindsight, I shouldn't have tried so hard to make theme. Um, did make and I sent it to you guys. I made a uh, a different version of the team, still based on Deathstroke and Franklin, and I kept most of the team actually. Um, kept Mary Jane, both Mary Janes, kept Marvella. Um, but I added um, doc the Uncommon Doctor Strange from Avengers uh, Forever and the Starter Set Watcher. Um, I, one of the biggest things that my team didn't have was telekinesis, so yeah. Strange gives that in spades, and also um, still has a perplex if I need that. And then um, I was worried about Barrier, which is why I had Bombastic Bagman for the Super Strength, but Franklin can still do that, and... Um, and Watcher, his lines fire aren't blocked, so being able to defend the 20s is really big. Like, that helps protect Deathstroke from Karima, for example. Um, you know, can't hurt him if you can't hit him. And also the outwit through everything is amazing. A lot of people played Watcher. And I was going to say, I think probably right, I believe that. Watcher, Deathstroke, Blue Marvel, there's like a few figures that just really stand out in pulp. And yeah, they... They seem to be on a lot of teams because, like, that watcher. What I will say about that watcher a 20 defend, especially that combined with manifolds, uh, combat reflexes that he gives out to like adjacents and stuff, that seems insane until you realize the Hulk, the rare Hulk from Avengers 60th on his own, just with the Avengers yeah. team ability and his printed stats, is a 14 for five. And then if he picks up like blocking or something, he's yeah. a 14 for seven. And that's pretty easy to hit. That's only a six so to hit the, a twenty. Only an eight to hit that, a twenty-two. The way that the watcher protects himself from Hulk is the outwits. So you can um you can like outwit his super strength or outwit his charge. But, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, depending on what you need. <clears throat> but you you really need to get rid of like that's one of Watcher's biggest strengths in my opinion, is his insane range and yep. then his ability to see through everything. So yeah, you do so, just have the ability to outwit Pretty much anything uh, that's scary all, across the board. Same with, like, you can outwit Deathstroke's, like, running shot or his pulse wave ability. So to talk briefly about the rest of the event, um, one of the other people in top four was also playing Franklin, which um, made me feel good because I feel like people have been sleeping on him and he's amazing. Um, but then also um, the person that won the event was not Scott Crampton. Um, that's not to say, like, oh, boo, Scott, I'm so glad he lost. Yeah, but, uh, Scott, boo, Scott, boo, Scott, boo, Scott. Oh, I'm okay with that. But um, the person that did win was one of our local players, um, Norm Corian. He uh, he was playing, um, I forget his exact build, but he was playing, like, um, 
Mr. Sinister and Scarlet Witch to replace Dice with Ones. And he had Blue Marvel and Red Widow is kind of his damage. And then he had other support okay. around that. Um, that Red Widow it is nasty. She's yeah. good. She's real good. Yep. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, he, he played really well all day long. Um, it was a bit rough. Um, round one and in top four, he had to play against and beat his brother. Sorry, fam. Blood is not always thicker than water, I guess. But uh, so, congratulations wow. a lot to Norm. Shout out to him. Um, I'm sorry, he did a great job. He he just started playing again after many years away from the game. Um, when uh, an X of like halfway through the X of Swords storyline OP, he started playing again, and this was his first like big event back. And uh, obviously, okay. he did great. Awesome. I love to see that. I've heard a lot of people in the community saying how much they love Pulp. Obviously, to like to me and Calder, it just seems like a uh, more Jurassic streamlined Angel. popper. <laughs> it, it, se- it seems like more streamlined popper to me, where there's just like a less, you know, question over what's legal, what's not. I did really like the popper scene when like the uncommon objects and stuff were allowed, you know, blah, blah, blah. Not to mention that was cool. nowadays, um, the last couple sets where they've had objects, they all have the super rare rarity tab. So it doesn't matter. They wouldn't have been legal anyhow, but, uh, yeah, you think that was intentional. Like they had already had pulp in mind when they I were kind of do. Cause it, it does fe- seem weird. Cause some of the objects that have that super rare tab are like boomerangs, boomerangs, He's not a super rare, but his object has that super rare tab. Right. So previously they had been the same color code as the rarity of like whoever they came with, like Scourge's uh, Blood Axe. He was an uncommon, right. the Blood Axe was uncommon. Yeah. Um, stuff like that. But it is strange. I don't I don't know if that's why, but they also just say straight up like in the pulp rulings, like no additional game elements that aren't maps, mm-hmm. uh, dice, um, standard terrain, blah, 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 that kind of thing. But uh, now I, I will say building around pulp and playing around pulp is probably the closest way to recreate a sealed environment, like a sealed uh, tournament yeah. without actually opening boosters. And so it's just really insanely fun to me because it's kind of just like building with these like half, like hot, I don't know, like, uh, it's kind of like just like weirdly like wired teams where it's like they do this one really cool thing and if I can just pull that off then I might win but if like my opponent beats me to the punch then I just lose that it seems very like sealedish and things like you know having watcher with like a plus 3 range so he can just like be this glass cannon that shoots through all things seems really good on paper and seems really good in pulp but other things manage to beat it so I don't know it's still a rock, paper, scissors kind of match. It's just a whole new terrain, a whole new situation that we're working out still. Yeah, I agree. I think it's just a really cool format. And I like the creativity that people are able to do when it's um, kind of within its own limited box where it's kind of like, okay, you know, you have to use a triangle. But now you have to make a, you know, draw a really cool picture using only triangles. That's kind of how Pulp feels where it's like, okay, well, you don't get all of modern. You get this stuff. And so let's see your creativity. What can you do with just this stuff? And we're seeing some great stuff out of everybody. That's right. Where does the triangle go? That's right. The square hole. Where's the circle go, Calder? Oh, please. That's right. No, that's right. The square, the square hole. hole. Yeah, I know. I know. No, no, it goes in the... Where's this? Where's the half cylinder piece? Uh, that's right. The square hole. Uh, <laughs> traumatizing. Oh. Terrible. Don't show that to anybody's kids. Oh, it's horrible. Speaking of traumatizing TikToks, have you seen this NPC TikTok trend? Like TikTok live NPC do thing? You, do you mean like the girl that's like, what do you want to do today? And her like jaws like broken. They do like, 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 yeah, they, they do this like quote unquote repeated animation. Like uh, what did, what would you call it in an actual game? Um, it's kind of like they're waiting animation, yeah, right? The, the, kind of their uh, idle, idle, the idle idling, animation. Idling? Yeah. They yeah do, okay. So like these real people a quote unquote idle animation. They make up this like fake animation. I've been recording a little bit, like about 30 seconds of each one I come across because I, I 
mostly go on to TikTok to try and make TikToks for Dial H, and then I just get sidetracked and watch like a full movie. I watched all of uh, what's the one with Jason Statham, Driver, uh, the driver, the drivey one, Transport, Transporter. Transporter. Yeah, I watched the whole first movie on a TikTok account. It was 182 parts. It was pretty insane. Pretty fun. Is that the I- ideal way to watch Transport? There's Not no ads. Too off topic. Whoa, maybe yeah, it no is. ads. Okay, so maybe. Yes, I had to swipe up every thirty seconds, but no ads. But anyhow, uh, as I'm, I'm as I'm swiping, occasionally I come across these live ones, and I found this dude with a top hat that was made out of popcorn, or maybe it was just like bedazzled with popcorn. He's doing the weird NPC voice, trying to like his best to emulate the same phrase over and over again. I come across like some sort of Jersey shore reject. That's also doing the same thing. She's trying to like emulate the same voice. She's failing miserably. A lot of these people are really bad at it. And it just came to the conclusion after seeing about six of these people, what are these people like, is this their job? Do they make enough money doing this? And it's like such a weird thing that like I'm immediately unnerved not because I think like they're they're doing a good job of Uncanny Valley, but just because it's like this is an adult doing this very lame thing. <laughs> like I enjoy the Skyrim like videos where it's just you know Skyrim NPC like walking into a wall, blah blah blah. This is not that. This is like low effort, just I don't know, terrible terrible stuff, and they'll do it for hours at a time. I don't know. I'm fascinated about it. It's just, I don't even know what to say. It's fascinating. I just, Truly. Yeah. Mm. Beautiful. What does it mean? <laughs> I really hope what that like doing? TikTok gets banned in America. Like I hope it it just gets deleted from our phones because it's not it's not great. It's not going good. I wouldn't. I, I watched wouldn't hate that. I think I'd be fine with it. I watched several minutes of people live reacting, saying, ooh, hot dog, ooh, lollipop, ooh, popcorn, ooh, rose. And I just, I can't take it anymore. I don't that want it. That sounds awful. Yeah. I don't want it. Why, why did you watch it? Oh, it's a train You got wreck. sucked in. You got it's sucked like, in. Where did this person away. go wrong in their life where they were like, ah, you know what? I wanted to be a doctor, but at one point I realized I could just go on TikTok Live and say the word of an image that pops up in a funny voice over and over again, and people will pay me, like, nickels to do so. Maybe this is a topic for a different different podcast. Yeah, I, but I liked the <laughs> tangent we went on. I can't say I hate hate how non-Hero Clicks related it was, but it was kind of fun. Uh, back, back, uh, so we finished yes. Pulp. I, I think that's a great yes. way to end Pulp with a, uh, what, I would do at a Hero Books tournament during the top four if I'm not in it, which is look at TikToks or Instagram like reels. Uh, so that oh, was I thought you meant scary. act just, like an NPC just, in the corner. Oh, just... oh, yeah. I like to go through a couple idle animations at work, you know, to like look busy where it's like I should just I coil mean, this extension cord. Uh, I don't know <laughs> what to do right now. I no one's told me to do anything. Acted like an NPC after I was knocked out of it. I was waiting I for believe it. to see oh. how far Norm went. That'd be yeah. a fun video yeah. series. <sighs> we just so go I, up to like meta teams and we're just like ooh deathstroke ooh watcher ooh deathstroke like just repeat those um, over and over again i did well i waited i um there was music playing so i just kind of (laughs) danced and and then also at some point i realized people left a bunch of trash here i'm gonna clean up the room Hmm. (laughs) there you go that's nice be a little be a little productive be a little you know scott scott should have paid you for that that was uh janitorial duties as performed by alex here oh in the his weirdest thing venue. the weirdest thing about about the weekend venue wise was that scott didn't have a card reader so all what? payments that weren't cash were just to just paypal or venmo him oh Huh. I was gonna say you you were I thought you were gonna say like he didn't have like a physical card reader, so like his forehead just opened up and you had to like swipe your card I across his that. forehead to accept payment. That explains why he likes the bald robot so much. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Jeez, I truly uh, every time I, yeah, so I picture Scott had, at a tournament, 
other than the ones where I've been at, where he's also at, I just picture him like opening his mouth and his like eyes start like shooting out bright white beams. And he's just like, ah, (laughs) I don't know why. Between entries and snacks and drinks. I think over the weekend, if you look at my PayPal history right now, you'll see like 15 transactions to Scott Crankton. Oh my gosh. (laughs) I probably got flagged for something. I don't know. (laughs) Was it friends and family? It was. Oh, dang. I was going to say you should just cancel (laughs) that (laughs) request a refund on all of those. Uh, No, that's that's not a good thing to do. That's actually (laughs) a pretty bad thing to do. But yeah. So that was that was Friday. Um, then I went back to the hotel room. Um, I managed to get to sleep around one thirty in the morning, and um, and then I um, got up uh, Saturday. Um, not when I wanted to. I decide my body decided you are awake now at a quarter after five. And oh. um, yep. <laughs> so I just got up and. Basically worked on practicing placement and maps and thinking about different things that could happen and none of which did. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And then eventually, um, I, uh, went and got breakfast and then, uh, took a shower and went to the venue. So modern, uh, there wound up being 30 people for modern. Um, I played, um, Pretty close to the team that I played in Hero Clicks for Huntington's, which is a non-themed uh, collector team. Um, I did have both bonuses, so everyone on my team had plus one attack. Everyone on my team had plus one damage. And uh, th- so the team is... Here, I'll read it off. I've got it here. Um, so my prime is uh, Spider-Man Prime, the black suit Spidey, uh, with the uh, black symbiote on him for free. I had him at 80 points. Uh, Franklin Richards again. Love that guy. Especially with Collector. Um, I had uh, Saint Walker with the Blue Lantern Ring at 30. I had Felix Faust at 30. Um, I I gave him the Pumpkin Bombs because he had some, you know, his free place anywhere within four squares. And he has Pen Psy, so it gives him Penetrating Energy Explosion. Um, of course, Collector uh my common was uh, Deep Cuts Human Torch at 20 points. And then my uncommon was Jean Grey uh, from X of Swords. Um, and she had the Sinestro Core Ring. So Jean Grey with Sinestro Core Ring it was a very specific call. Because it, at that point, I needed an uncommon. I needed a leadership. I needed a telekinesis. I needed a perplex. I needed a barrier. And that she needed did not be from any of the other sets I had. She was literally the only option. Um, so, well, her plus Sinestro Core Ring was the only option. Um, and then I had um, Scrappy Doo on the sideline for Human Torch. I had just some Sentinels and some Scroll Spies because I could. And then my um, sixth uh, slot was Mystery of the Strange Cube. Because if um, ah. Spider-Man hits Super Senses enough times, then I get to do cool things. Spoiler alert for me talking about the rest of the event. He hits Super Senses zero times throughout the day. <laughs> nice. You know, I'm not going to lie. Uh, as a hater of Prime Spider-Man, I feel bad for you that you never hit your senses. But if I was there, I would be like, thank goodness he never hit them because I hate that. Yeah. Yeah. Um... And, oh, and I had, like, some elevated objects and whatever. I had some tarot cards, and um, I'll get to those for um, uh, one of the matches I'll talk about <clears throat> in a lesson I've learned. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, round one, I got paired against a... Um, the, um, I got paired against this guy, uh, Atlas. He's from Chicago. Super cool guy. Probably the most fun game I played that day, so shout out to Atlas. You're awesome. Um... And uh, he was playing, uh, he had Prime Hulk, he had Masters, uh, Double Masters of Evil Swap, um, he had Sky Tyrant with All Black the Necro Sword, um, there was some other stuff, I think Venom Magneto, I, I don't remember everything. Um, short version of the game, um, we went to, uh, I don't remember who won role, but I wound up picking map. We went to um, Construction Site. Um, and then, uh, he, 
Um, um, I barriered up on my first turn, and then he um, kind of came up a bit and uh, positioned in a way that um, basically I couldn't really get to him. Um, I had to do some pretty crazy shenanigans. Oh, the idea of the team, I should mention, the idea of the team is that um, if I don't care that much about you coming to me, um, I go to construction site, and then on my second turn, so once you don't have first turn immunity, I um, send both Spider-Man and Franklin Richards into your starting area to make five attacks for at least 12 attack and at least five damage each. That's what the team does. Um oh. Because I can TK them both, Spider-Man sidesteps, boops up to elevated, the charges, that gets there by itself. Um, TK Franklin and perplex up his movement three times. Um, so then he can charge, um, and then I pick sidestep, flurry, charge. So he can sidestep, and then he can charge the rest of the way. Um, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um... So I did manage to um, get on top of Sky Tyrant. I knew I had to kill the Sky Tyrant first because yeah. All Black Necrosword is such a problem for me. Um, so, And I also had to kill him before he could get Resurrection Tokens. Um, I So Franklin ran up to kill Sky Tyrant with some really weird angles. Um, and um, I, he succeeded uh, because, because Frank, he had um, King Killmonger out. But since Franklin can't be equipped, obviously he was not equipped, so he didn't get the rollouts for King Killmonger, and I was able to just kill the Sky Tyrant. Nice. Um, then Spider-Man came up and tried to do what he could, despite the rollouts on King Killmonger. I got a little lucky. I managed to um, hit twice out of my three attacks, because um, Spider-Man, on my turn one, I just have him move but stay in my starting area. So then when I send him out, he's double token after the first action can make another attack. Um... So I did manage to hit two out of the three. Didn't kill King Killmonger. I killed something. I don't honestly remember what. Um, and from there, um, it was a really close back and forth game. And then on last action, his Prime Hulk killed my... It was either Felix or St. Walker. And um, he won the game because of it. Uh, so I lost round one with last action. Um, oh. Oh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So you're saying uh, Prime then, Hulk needs to be eradicated, right? Needs to be banned from modern, from he all. all maybe types. needs something. You're gonna find a theme throughout the rest of this story. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so uh, he's he's really good. I don't I don't know how I would fix him. I don't know if you need to. Like you can't leave him alone, but he had enough stuff that I kind of had to leave him alone because I couldn't leave the other stuff alone. Um. Honestly, I don't even hate leaving him, like, totally alone. I've had games where I just, all right, whatever. If I kill the rest of his team, Hulk can only make one attack each turn. And yep. then if you have enough stuff alive, you'll be able to to deal with Hulk. But he's still super annoying. Not, like, that's not to say he's easy to deal with. He's not. Um, just a pick your battles thing sometimes. Yep. Yep. It's funny that we're uh, having this discussion after he's already been like quote unquote errata right. once. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was some people were playing him where you could take a, like a single action and just be top dial. Based on the so literal ridiculous. interpretation of the rules, that's how he would work. But that yeah. was obviously not the intent. No, not intent um, at all. So um round two I played against what was round two? I won. What was it? Oh, yeah. Round two, I got paired against, um, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name, but he was playing Legacy Thanos um, and uh, Prime Hulk and Molecule Man and Chip. And his last thing was the brain. So um, he was doing lots of cool mind control shenanigans and Thanos. And, you know, if you you know worry too much about the other stuff, Hulk will come Hulk you. And, um... So I, um, he took us okay. to Oscorp offices or whatever that's called. Forget. There's a lot of walls. Oh, Pretty good yeah. for Thanos. And um, he managed to like hide in a corner in a way that I couldn't get to everything. But I did uh, do some, I felt, pretty clever things to get Franklin on top of Hulk. And um, so I didn't kill Hulk right away. But um, I did knock Hulk back down after his original healing to where he was kind of bad and ineffectual. And um, 
and then I um, set up so that I could get to the rest of his team the next turn with Spider-Man. And um, basically, he moved up. He did a bunch of like mind control, all sorts of things. He got a little unlucky. Um, his first turn, he rolled for three gems. And on his second turn, when he would be doing the mind controlling, he only rolled for one gem. Um, but um, I finished off Hulk on my second turn. I killed Chip. And then I, I bruised leader. Um, he made a sentinel, um, did more mind control stuff. I made a sentinel. Um, and then on my next turn, I killed Chip and successfully rolled for scroll spy so he wouldn't get scrappy. Nice. And Aww. then, um, so uh, then there was a lot of back and forth at that point. I never managed to kill Thanos, and um, I think I only won because he misplayed. Like, he was playing well, but he, he um, I think maybe he, I don't know if he screwed up math or just wasn't thinking about it at the time, kind of going through the motions. Um, I probably only won because the next time when I killed um, uh, the brain, which also has the animal keyword, fun fact, um, he, uh, he yeah, called it sounds... Scrappy, and um, uh, he called it Scrappy, and I did not get uh, my scroll spy. Which I hadn't checked math, so um, I'm glad I didn't get my scroll spy because then I immediately killed the scrappy and wound up being instead of down by points um, five, I was up by points of, by twenty, and then he didn't manage to kill anything else, and then the, the round the the round ended. Um, so that was a close game. I won by twenty points, maybe only because he brought in scrappy. Um, round three. I got paired against... I'm one and one now. I got paired against PJ Bolin, who was playing Ultrons. Uh, it's a ruler theme with um, with uh, Mephisto with the team-up card. Do you know wow. how Mephisto works with Legacy Ultron? It's really dumb. Are you aware? I I don't understand. So Mephisto's thing is when you uh, go on and off the sideline. So I don't know how that would work no, with no, Legacy Ultron. Um, not, not, not the team-up. Um, he loses that when you do the team-up card. You okay. just play him on the team. team up card. Okay, so we'll, I don't know what's the ruler team up. I guess um, the ruler one. The months. ruler one oh. is if you would take damage from an attack, you may yeah. instead choose an adjacent character to take one unavoidable damage. Wow. So Legacy Ultron yeah. is has Mastermind and is eleven clicks long, and he flies. So you just carry Mephisto, Mastermind to him. <laughs> And you take one, no matter what anything is. Or you mastermind your drones, of course, and they don't. Wow, work. yeah, and then you can heal and stuff, and yeah, the drones. So, okay. Let me tell you how that game went. PJ rolled leadership ten times over the course of that game. He succeeded nine times. That's really good. That's super lucky. <laughs> um, and when I was going to do something really good to kill something, um, I, I had um, my uh, St. Walker made the chainsaw. I had the tarot card that gives plus one to a single d6 roll, the uh, Queen of Wands. Um, my chainsaw flurried, um, hit, rolled blades, rolled a six, so that would be seven damage. PJ rolled impervious, rolled a four. My tarot card makes it a five. He takes zero. Second attack, I mm. roll. I hit, I roll a five. It would be six damage. PJ rolls impervious, he rolls a four. My tarot card makes it a five. He takes zero. I've decided after this event that maybe the next time I play, just don't have a tarot deck. I feel See? like it's been okay. hurting me more See? than it's been helping. Oh, the other story of the event, um, as far as my tarot deck hurting me. Spoiler alert, I went 1-3 drop. Um, so, But the P the loss against PJ was the only one that I felt like, like wasn't close. So um, Franklin, at the end of my turn, if I picked powers or if he attacked, I, I rolled the d6, right? He takes damage equal to half the result. I, um, three out of the four rounds, I rolled a six with Franklin and he dealt three to himself. The fourth one that I didn't roll a six, I, or that he didn't take three, I rolled a six with Queen of Wands up and he took four. Oh. <laughs> he was very suicidal. Um, so then round four, uh, was against, um, I forget his name, but he was playing Genesis Apocalypse. And it was it was an X Men team, um, so Genesis, Apoc, Venom, Magneto, uh, Prime Hulk, uh, Sky Tyrant, 
Peeper, and uh, Miss Kang got brought in from something, I think. It might have been non-theme, and it was just... I don't remember. But, um... So, um... He sends Sky Tyrant out. Um, I barriered up. He sends Sky Tyrant out. Forgets that we both forgot it first, and then we backed up. Like, there weren't any actions taken afterwards by the time we remembered. So, we both forgot it first. But, um, you can't flurry quake anymore yeah so, you used um, to you used to be able to yep. yeah no. so um the only crack in my barrier was there was a corner where he could get to human torch quake blow up the barrier and hit him um so first we thought he killed him and then we were like wait a minute we couldn't do that and so then uh, we backed up and he hit him once to the stop click and then backed away and then franklin went and just murdered um sky tyrant and then i sent spider-man out to uh in theory kill Venom Magneto and either Genesis or Apocalypse. So I made three attacks with two targets each. I dealt damage once. They all hit numerically. So between Super Senses and the Apocalypse rollout. Um, yeah. So I killed Venom Magneto <laughs> and then he just uh, turned his Hulk around and uh, um, they all beat the crowd of my Spider-Man um, who missed his Super Senses, missed his uh, Impervious missed his super senses, missed his impervious, he outwitted super senses, and then Spider-Man died. Uh, and then the, the game kind of spiraled out of control from there. I did manage to, like, kill some stuff, but it was... I couldn't do enough quickly enough. And then I dropped and played a Battle Royale and got my um, my secondary goal for the weekend. Won a Battle Royale... Well, I got second in a Battle Royale, but got the thing I actually wanted, um, which was a Scott Porter Pog, because I didn't have one yet. And then... Um, I decided that my wife would probably like it if I went home, and um, I went home. <laughs> I guess so. Spending time with the family? What? No. I know, right? I mean, and at that point, idea. it was already it was already like six o'clock. So, babe, it's so late already. Like, come on. <laughs> what? Are, we're gonna go to sleep. What do you? Come on. Like, what? I'm gonna like say hi, bye, grab a snack from the kitchen, and pass out. I just drove three hours. No, that's funny. Precisely. <laughs> but uh, all right. So I'm glad, you know, I'm glad you enjoyed Michigan States. Thank you for kind of telling us about how the event went and everything. I know we did was... get some live streaming from it. Mm -hmm. uh, so shout out to old Alec there over at uh, Here Who's USA for doing some of that. But uh, I'm glad that we could get a little more in depth conversation about how yeah. the event went. And I know you know, I, we'll I spent a lot of time talking about the games but just the overall atmosphere and feeling everything was great it didn't i didn't get the results i wanted but i had a ton of fun um it was so awesome i'm very excited for states you know presumably again next year and um, right i'll definitely go wherever it is whether it's you know american merchant theater again or anywhere else i'm definitely gonna go um, I got to meet people, a bunch of people that I had, you know, previously talked to online, but hadn't met in person before. George Massu and I actually talk quite, you know, fairly frequently. We've done some trades and stuff. And we've, you know, become kind of friends through that and talk about teams and stuff. And he doesn't actually live that far from our stores. He keeps being like, well, if I can ever not work during that, <laughs> I yeah. try to go, but... There so you go. George is a pretty great guy. I've, I've talked yeah. to him quite a bit. We, we share a uh, mutual love of Lex Luthor and hatred of Superman, so I'm, I'm big on there George. Cool guy. He was wearing a um, Dark Side uh, shirt. Um, okay. So, yep. Well, Dark Side is action, just something. Yep. But right on, right on. I also have to say, I love that it's in Grand Rapids, Michigan, which is. A, a reference, obviously the entire town of Grand Rapids is a reference to Army of Darkness, which is where Ash gets his boomstick, where the boomstick is made is in Grand Rapids, Michigan for $109.95 but that is Alex, Alex, before we close off the show, do you want to probably shout out Stadium, any other shout outs or anything you want to do before we close up shop here um so yeah, I mean, I talked about my store a little bit. Um, we do have an event if you're if you're in Michigan and want to come, or if you happen to be visiting in the areas. Um, every Wednesday at four o'clock in Frankenmuth, every Sunday at four o'clock in Bay City. Um, every week the format's different. It's all on the win. Um, if you look up our Facebook pages or our website, the stadiumbc.com. If you go to the event calendar, there'll be a link to our win page there for the venue. 
Um, uh, lots of fun. Uh, we do have singles at our Frank Muth store. Um, Frank Muth, if you're not familiar, is a very much a tourist town. Um, it gets generates some. Um, maybe the most or second most i don't remember if we're beating mackinac city or not um tourism money in the state as far as the city oh, goes oh wow yeah it's yeah <laughs> um so um you know there's lots of stuff to do um lots of stuff to see um it'd be awesome if people came and visited um and um actually there's a big hotel the bavarian Inn lodge uh, basically across from our parking lot and um, they actually are just finishing up a rent of, um, giant addition to their building that's going to add basically a conference center. Um, so there's, there's uh, you know, maybe some things on the horizon that I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about uh, oh. that could be very cool. Hmm. Interesting. Very fun. Interesting. Very fun. Well, make that's, sure to um, follow. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Alex, for being on. And if you want to... Follow the podcast, do all these things. You can leave us a review on iTunes or Podbean, which is, of course, probably how you're listening to this right now. Or maybe you're listening to this on YouTube, in which case, make sure you are subscribed. And if you're not listening on YouTube, hey, go on over to our YouTube and subscribe. We just hit 1,500 subscribers uh, like this past week, which is really, really, really cool. So we almost have all of the Heroclix players subscribe to us. So I would really like <laughs> to... Like hit that number soon it'd be really, <laughs> it'd be really fun uh I, there's a, there's a few more of you guys out there that still need to subscribe and i'll wait for you we'll be here yeah. Super plus you have families we'll all of you have families yeah your keep wife that your mind. kids your your grandparents your uncles your parents yeah. all of them yeah they're like what's this weird game you always talk about and you're like here exactly. let me subscribe you to dial h I, I'm not going to lie, I thought you were going more of the threat route. Like, no, no. you all have families. You don't <laughs> no, want no, anything no. to... I'm just, I'm just no. saying, if, if you really want to grow this game, you'll, uh, I don't know, force yeah, tell your them, families tell to listen to it. I've had people say, like, hey, look, I don't really understand a lot of your videos, but uh, some of them are pretty funny, and I understand a little bit. I've had a lot of people listen and be like, I just listened to the What Made You Guys Happy this week, see what funny gift gabs and banter you get into and then before you start talking all that that game nonsense i leave so even if they don't yeah know what hero clicks is and maybe this will get them interested in it tell them to come on check out the dialogue hero clicks podcast check out the youtube channel just check out hero clicks in general make sure to follow us on twitter instagram youtube and facebook to keep up with all the cool dial h goodness yeah and if they decide that they want to start purchasing hero clicks make sure to tell them to check out coolstuffinc.com where they can find cool stuff in stock every day including the latest hero clicks singles and sealed products they've got some pre-orders going up for notorious so use code dial five to save five percent there and if you want to go to the direct source go to shop.wizkids.com and you can save 10 percent by using code dial h10 and that works on any Heroclix products outside of the Iconics and Play at Home kits. And like always, happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Heroclix. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like 100 instant deadpan humor. Over oh, yeah. six oh, people yeah. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fools. I'm going to be able to edit that out. That's cool because I'm going to make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Yeah, and like always, say hi to your mother for me. Yay, hey, your mother. Hey. Thank you, Alex. Thank you for being on, man. We really appreciate it.